Hello, everybody. Welcome to Florida. It's eight o'clock here. <laughs> um, we're going to do some hips tonight. I have very creative props, a very big George R.R. R. Martin book, and a belt that it is my mother in law's. So you're going to just need a block and a strap. And um, there are palm trees over this way, but it's too dark to see. The good news is that I will not be affected by bugs because there's a screen on this outside area. Okay. And the theme for this class is to recognize where you are and know that that is the perfect place to start whatever journey you're on. You're exactly where you're meant to be right now. So come to a child's pose. Knees wide, big toes together to touch. Sit your hips back, walk your hands forward, grip down into the mat, and let your forehead rest down on the mat. Try and stretch your arms long. You can even tend your palms up and toes down. Maybe shimmy a little bit from side to side. Let there actually be a connection between your big toes so that the energy can cycle through your body. So from the bottom of the feet, you can just kind of connect to the other foot and then back up. your eyes closed, let your body start to feel heavy. Knowing that this is, okay, hopefully that was a little bit quieter music. That this is exactly where you are meant to be and this is where you start from. And so I don't know if you have you know, maybe something that you're working on in your life. I'm a, I very optimistically signed up for a run, a trail run with my friend this summer. And so this week is the start of training. And so training is going to be on a beach, even though it is a <laughs> mountain trail run. This week, it's going to be at sea level. It just is what it is, and it'll be a nice gentle start, I feel like. So maybe there's something else in your life that you feel like you're just beginning on that journey. And so accepting where you are at the beginning or maybe the middle of that journey. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And exhale. See if you can fill with acceptance and gratitude for where you are. One more time, deep breath in and out. If your palms are lifted, bring them down to the mat. Ground them down and slowly draw yourself forward. And bring your knees gently together and come to a seat. So we're going to move into Agni Stambhasana, so fire log pose. Tonight is all about our hips. And we can store a lot of latent energy in our hips. And then, you know, sometimes it's energy that can really help us on this journey. And sometimes it's energy that's holding us back. So as we start to get into the hips, maybe explore a little bit what that energy is. Bring your right leg on the bottom, left leg on top, right leg, toes are flexed and you want that to be parallel with the side of the mat and then as you bring the other leg over top scoop glutes back you want to stack the outside of your ankle to the inside of your knee flex that foot as well so that your legs stack like a log on a fire now for tonight's class if you typically take a modification here try the modification where the top leg just comes just right in front so it's like they're almost stacked, but they just barely miss each other. Because um, we will get into a figure four. So 
want to do something a little bit different to start. Maybe take a good scoop of your glutes back and set your hip points back down. Sit up nice and tall. Hands come down to the side, fingertips tent again. Sit your spine nice and tall. Maybe close your eyes. Start to feel the left leg and left knee get a little closer to that bottom ankle or inside of your foot. So Agni Sambhasana, fire log pose, is a pose that is very much so um, a journey, right? So when you first were introduced to this pose, maybe a year ago in this class or two years ago, um, you know, potentially your knees are up really high, your hips were not used to being this open, especially on the exterior, the outside of your hips. And it's not something you can force. You can just press those knees down. Instead, it's something that you have to accept where you are and know that the journey is going to be long and there's going to be a lot of work. But putting in the time and putting in the effort of holding this pose for an extended period of time is where you start to see the progress. Keep those toes flexed back. Try and open your chest and your heart. So if you are somebody that tends to let your shoulders round forward, be very conscious of pulling your shoulder blades together, retracting them on your back and drawing them down, maybe even letting your elbow tips bend slightly and draw in towards your side ribs. Okay. Slowly start to fold forward. And regardless of if you're in the modification of the leg is forward, or if you have the leg stacked, you're gonna gently cradle that leg and bring it up. So you wanna make sure the top foot is flexed so that as you grab that foot and draw it closer and higher up, your knee is supported. Biceps are doing a little bit of work here to draw you in. Gently rock that leg from side to side. And then if you'd like to, you can start to lift it up. So that foot maybe starts to come a little bit closer towards your shoulder. With this bottom leg, I'd like you to walk it forward and out and plant your foot down. We're gonna gently place the outside of our ankle onto the top just above our knee into figure four. Plant both hands behind you, lift your chest. Now, if you can, maybe walk this forward foot, the planted foot closer in or scoot your glutes closer to that ankle, press your hands down and reach your chest towards the inside of that shin. Again, keeping that top foot flexed, getting a little bit deeper into your figure four. So approaching it from many angles, letting the posture develop feeling your limitations and then approaching that edge without passing over that threshold of pain or injury, right? So you have to have some intuition about your body, about your own limitations. All right, slowly again, moving that bottom foot, bring it across, and then you're gonna bring your top foot down. So left foot planted, Bring your left hand down right at the base of your spine. Sit up nice and tall. I'm going to take this into a gentle twist. Using your right hand to the outside of your left knee, gently twist over. And then if you'd like to go a little bit deeper, you can bring the elbow outside of the knee. Some people here, and that's not me, can actually take a bind, bringing the hand inside the leg and then reaching your back hand around. One thing that I notice when I do take this bind like deeper in a class or with the help of the strap is that you can tend to start to roll forward. So if you notice your shoulders rolling, 
back out a little bit. Use that back hand as a support along your spine so you can sit up nice and tall and then gazing out over to the left side. Keep your chin in line with your chest. Inhale, exhale. Of course, now I'm doing this on a full, full tummy tonight. <coughs> a little different than when I'm in mountain standard time. <laughs> All right. One more time, inhale, and then exhale, slowly unwind. Bring both feet forward, plant them down onto the mat, and then just take some gentle uh, windshield wipers, knees dropping from side to side. Right. And then we'll move into Agni Sambhasana on the second side. So for me, if you're following along, um, Left leg on the bottom, foot flex, shin trying to be parallel with the front or the side of your mat, and then flexing the top foot, drawing it all the way around so that the inside of your ankle comes to, or the outside of your ankle rather, to the inside of your knee. And that foot flexed, reach and pull your glutes back. Anchor your knees so that they stack on top of your ankles or take the variation where you just drop this top foot right in front so it's just barely missing draw your fingertips in towards your side sit up nice and tall inhale slow exhale moving into ujjayi breath if you have not already Breathing in and out through your nose, letting it be slow and controlled. And letting it be grounding. So you really feel your hips sinking down into the knot, creating a starting point. So anytime you do any kind of spinal lengthening without grounding at the base of your spine, it's like a slinky, right? It's just gonna come with you. So you really have to know where your foundation is, where you find strength, where you are starting your journey. Slowly letting those knees get a little bit heavier. And if you gaze down in front of you, you should see what looks like an equilateral triangle. It's kind of a fun little maybe factoid, um, that in ancient India, they actually built fires with three sides. So Agni Sambhasana, or fire log pose, is supposed to be a three-sided fire, which I have never tried, and I'm gonna try that lot next time. A log cabin, but three sides. <laughs> All right, slowly start to walk your hands forward, taking this top leg, foot still flexed, grabbing the outside of that foot and starting to lift and elevate it off the bottom leg, making some pivots, rotating that femur head into your hip socket. Kind of looks like I'm actually in a fire right now. It's just the gentle light of a starfish lamp. <laughs> All right, rolling side to side. And starting to work it up higher, take the bottom foot, walk it over to the left side and then plant that foot down. Take the outside of the ankle, place it just above the knee. Hands come down behind you. Elevate your chest and then maybe walk the heel back. Maybe scoot the hips forward so you get a deeper stretch. Keep that top, the figure four foot flexed back. As you press your chest, to the inside of your shin. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Keep those toes flexed. Maybe chest can actually touch the inside of your shin. Maybe not. One more breath in. And then as you exhale, start to heel toe that left foot across, bringing the heel 
towards the right hip and then planting the right foot down so it's a cross see if you can bring this outer right hip down and then take your right hand place it right at the bottom of your spine at the base lift up to lengthen use your hand to the outside of your knee and then gently guide your torso across into a gentle twist inhale lift your chin slightly and then exhale make the twist a little bit deeper that one more time inhale and exhale keeping your spine long by keeping that hand grounded down at the base of your spine maybe bring elbow now to the outside of your knee you can take that bind hand underneath this top quad and the back hand working around again moving the breath in and out through the nose if you started to move the breath into the mouth another inhale and then exhale slowly release unwind your legs plant both feet down in windshield wiper dropping the knees to one side and then to the other And then once your knees drop over to the left side, stop. Take your left foot, place it on top of your right knee. Start to lower your torso down, first coming down to elbows. Press down with that left foot on top of the right knee. Maybe come all the way down to your back. Should feel a nice stretch all the way along the front of the right quad and then a little bit to the outside to the IT band inhale exhale maybe you're on forearms or maybe you're down on your back take another deep breath in and out engage your core inhale slowly bring yourself back up onto your hands Remove that top foot, windshield wiper again to each side. And this time stop when your left leg is dropped to the inside. Take your right foot, place it on top of the outside of your knee. So you're anchoring it down, drop down onto your forearms. Keep pressing down, lengthening that femur as much as it'll go. And then decide if you're going to stay there or maybe drop all the way down onto your back. Keep using the weight of that foot to anchor the inside of your knee down on the left side and then feel a gentle pull all the way up to the outside of your left hip crest. So the left hip point. Take a breath in and out. One more time, breath in and out and inhale engage your core slowly walk your hands back underneath you and up remove that leg again windshield just one side time each side and then with knees up you'll slowly roll onto your back with your block or ginormous george rr R. martin book Oh, this is a block tonight. All right. So I also have the world's thinnest mat. Um, so this is going to be really interesting on tile. <laughs> All right, lift your feet straight up and you're going to take your block or whatever you're using tonight and squeeze it. Now, if you're using an actual yoga block, something that doesn't have pages, you can squeeze at the medium height or the medium width rather between your feet. For this, the book pages are just, they're not cooperating. So you can also do the smaller. You just want to keep an, an integration in your legs. You're going to take your hands and bring them out to the side at about a 45 degree uh, angle so that you have anchors pressing down into the floor. 
squeeze your block, press your feet up, and actually get a little bit of weight more into the low back and not so much in the hips. So you feel this slight anterior tilt of the pelvis. So instead of your low back lifting, instead your low back is pressing down and your navel is already engaged and drawing down into your spine. Inhale here, press your feet up. And then exhale, start to drop your feet over to the left side. Now, do your best to keep your right palm lifted and don't let your legs actually rest to the left side. Instead, keep squeezing that block. Inhale, come all the way up through center. Squeeze that block. Exhale, legs to the right. Press through the right hand, anchor the left inhale up to center and so it might not go very far over to the side exhale to the left you don't want it to drop forward that's just too easy instead you want to give yourself breaks so that you can inhale pull yourself back up and then exhale to the other side so we're using not so much the core down the middle, but instead using some of the lateral strength. So keep tick-tocking side to side. Top of your inhale, you'll press through the middle and then bottom of your exhale, you'll find the depth to the next side. Inhale and slow exhale. more time inhale and exhale inhale bring your feet back up to center move your hands reach up grab your block bend your knees and plant your feet down take your block squeeze it in between your knees place your hands down on your mat walk your heels in slightly so that you can graze the bottom or the back rather of your heels and then Flip your palms to face up towards the ceiling. Spread your toes, press your whole foot down and gently lift your pelvis. Walk your shoulders in. And then a couple of different variations you can do with your hands. I like to use my pointer finger and thumb and then like a cup, find my ankle. Pressing the ring finger down and the thumb. Fingertips to the inside so you get a nice external rotation in the arms keep squeezing the knees you can interlace your hands if you prefer or take and grab the side of your mat so that you're pulling the mat away like you could rip it hot dog style right down the middle continue to squeeze that block lift your hips a little bit higher and let your hamstrings and quads do a little bit more of the work see if you can release about 80 percent in your glutes Inhale and exhale. Continue to squeeze that block. If you have a good foundation with your hands and you want to take a little bit deeper, press down through the right foot, lift the left leg straight for it. Spread your toes and press through the ball of the foot. Whew. Press down a little bit more through that right foot. See if you can lift your left hip up so that it's even. Take another deep breath in. And then exhale, left foot down. Whew, doozy. All right, squeeze your palms or pull the mat or cup your heels, whichever variation you're doing. Squeeze the block and lift the right leg. So your quads are parallel. Right toes are pressing forward. Lift the right hip up and press more through your left foot. Take an inhale and exhale. One more breath here, inhale, exhale, right foot down. Squeeze the block, lift the hips high, take another deep breath in, release your hands, and then exhale, lower down. Take your block of choice and bring it off to the side, gently grab your knees and draw them in and wide. Flex your toes back and then bring your feet up to the ceiling. We're gonna go for a child's pose here. With both hands, grab for the outside of your foot. So your elbows will be inside of your knees 
And if this is too much, you can always take a strap across the bottom of both feet and grab the strap or your mother-in-law's belt. <laughs> All right, so feet pressing up towards the ceiling, hands actively pulling down. See if you can draw your knees a little bit wide and then lower your tailbone down to the mat. Gently press the back of your head into the mat. Inhale and exhale. Pull a little bit more with your hands. Anchor your tailbone down. Take another deep breath in. And then exhale. Ooh, slowly release. Roll both feet onto one side and then gently press yourself up. Coming into all fours. And then lifting your knees, come into a nice long plank pose. Spread your fingers, press down with your hand and see if you can protract your shoulders. So protracting your shoulders is pulling them away from your spine, almost inflating just in your upper back. Drop your hips down slightly so you have a nice long spine, but feel as though your humerus, your upper arm bone could grow a little bit longer. Inhale, exhale, gaze down at your feet. You're gonna slowly walk your feet all the way to your hand until you get to an Uttanasana at the front of your mat, forward fold. And you might need to start to bend your feet or your knees rather as you get closer to the front. Draw your fingers back so that they're in line with your toes and then drop the crown of your head. Inhale, feel your ribs press into your thighs. Ah, exhale, fold. Then unfurling the spine, keep bent knees as you slowly draw yourself up to standing. Reach your arms all the way up, inhale. And then exhale, bring your hands down to heart center. We'll move through some sun salutations, bringing a little bit of hips into it tonight. Inhale, reach your arms up. And then exhale, fold. Fingertips come down just to the outside of your feet. And then you're gonna step the left foot back into a nice long lunge. Tent your fingertips, draw your chest forward and through. Inhale, exhale, lower the left knee down. So I am on a very hard surface tonight, but by having a very long lunge, my kneecap is not pressing into this very tough tile. Instead, it's the head of the quad. So make sure that you're in a long lunge that your knee is pulled forward before you set it down. Or also put a pillow, very nice nautical pillow underneath your knee. Inhale, walk your hands up to your right calf. Move your chest so that it is perpendicular with the ground. So as your right knee back, left knee forward. So that engagement around the hips is also going to bring a lot of support, especially with core engaged around your SI joint. Inhale, reach your arms up. Take a deep breath in and out. One more time. Inhale, keep pulling that left knee forward, right knee back. Exhale, place your hands down, but both hands to the inside of your right foot. Pull your chest forward. Runner's lunge. Maybe walk your hands a little bit forward. Keep this right knee and your right shoulder bleed together. Let your chin drop in towards your chest. So hips are parallel. Knee is drawing in towards midline. So you got everything closed tight. Take a deep breath in and out. All right, slowly start to bend your left quad, left knee rather, Oop, little seashell. <laughs> and then you're gonna reach your right arm forward, rotate it up and then reach back for that leg. Now, if you don't get the leg, you can take your strap 
Make a little lasso and hook around that foot. Again, make sure that your right foot remains planted. So we're engaging in our hips, keeping our hips closed, not letting it drop out to the side. Don't worry, we will get there. Maybe bring your left forearm down to the mat. Keeping hold of your left foot. Keep pressing down through your right toenail into the mats, right heel is grounded. You're not moving the weight to the outside of your right foot. Move maybe your gaze to be internal. Let your breath and the sound of your breath fill your senses. One more time, deep breath in and out. If you're on your left forearm, press through your hand to come up, gently release that leg. Plant both hands down again to the inside of your right foot and tuck your left toes, lift your left feet. All right, drawing your navel up and in. See if you can step the right foot back, coming in to plank pose. Take an inhale. Exhale, we'll lower all the way down to the mat. So knees can come down first, or you can lower down as one unit. Palms underneath your shoulders, elbow tips back, press the top of your feet down, draw your heels together, and inhale, lift up Cobra Pose. Exhale, lower yourself down, move your hands wider than your shoulders, just directly out to the sides. Tend your fingertips. Inhale again, lift up Cobra. Keep your hips heavy, pressing down, draw your heels towards each other, exhale lower. Now walk your hands in front of your shoulders, but forward in front of your mat. Draw your elbow tips in, kind of like a praying mantis Cobra. Inhale, lift up. And exhale down, slide your palms back under your shoulders, tuck your toes, activate your legs, inhale, press up, and then bend your knees gently, come back, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, spread your hands, press through them to elevate your hips, and then exhale, let your heels drop down. One more time, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, bring your left leg high. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Plant it down to the inside of your left foot. Tent your fingertips, draw your chest forward, and then slowly lower your right knee down. Toes can stay tucked, or you can press the top of your right foot down. Walk your hands up onto your left thigh. Keep pressing down through the left big toe, the left heel, and then draw your left heel back right knee forward. So there is a scissoring like action that happens at the hips. So I like to think of like a little kid learning how to use scissors. And if they don't apply pressure between those blades, if there isn't that friction, right? The paper will just turn 90 degrees and no paper is cut. So if you just kind of hang out here, first off, it can be really a lot on your hips. And there's not that integration and the muscular stability to push that edge of flexibility. So finding that pulling back and drawing right knee forward, that's that friction that's like cutting a piece of paper, using scissors for the first time. Inhale, draw your arms up. Exhale. By the way, mom, I still remember these like red weird scissors that we had as kids with like an eyeball. <laughs> I don't know why. All right, take another deep breath in. I don't even know what that animal is supposed to be. <laughs> Exhale, plant your hands down, tuck your back toe, and bring both hands to the inside of your left foot. Grounding your left heel down, rotate your left toes out to the side. Tuck your back toes under, lift your right knee, and then big step forward with the right foot, 
into Malasana Yogi Squat at the front of your mat. Elbows to the inside of your knees, draw your hands down to heart center and use that friction in between elbows to knees to slowly open and adduct in the hips. I want you to keep pressing with your knees in towards your elbows and then use your elbows and drawing them down to heart center to not only open your knees, but to lengthen your spine too. Heels down, they might be lifted and this might be a little bit higher. That's okay. Another deep breath in and out. Plant your hands, straighten your legs. Inhale, press up halfway, lift your heart, elevate. And then exhale, fold. Bend your knees, thighs to ribs, slowly unfurl. And then press your legs towards straight, reach your arms up. Inhale, exhale, hands down to heart center. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, fold into, plant your hands down, step your right leg back. Tent your fingertips, take a nice long lunge. And then exhale, lower your right knee down. Again, making sure that you're not on the patella, but instead more on the head of the quad. And slowly work your hands up to your left thigh. Again, find that friction. Draw in, let the energy of the pose start to move at the hip. So you feel up from the right, drawing up from the left and pulling in and pooling right at this bowl of your hips. Arms up, inhale, exhale. Lift your gaze, take another deep breath in and pull in, might even lift slightly out of the pelvis. And then exhale, both hands in side of your left foot. Keep your left knee, inner knee and shoulder connected. Walk your hands forward. Inhale, exhale, drop your chin in towards your chest. Gaze down, maybe close your eyes. Keep a strong foundation here. Keep pressing through that left foot. Keep drawing your knee in towards your shoulder, even though it wants to drop out to the side. And then with that connection, maybe feel your hips draw a little bit closer down towards the earth. Slowly begin to bend the right knee. Grab your strap if you did that on the other side. Reach your left arm forward, rotate around and capture that foot. Again, keep pressing down through the front left foot, big toe mound inside of that ankle. And gently pull your right heel in towards your glute. Either stay here pressing through the right palm or gently lower your right forearm down to the mat. Again, gaze is down. Maybe start to close your vision. And let the sound and the fullness of your breath start to take over. As you inhale, feel your lungs expand. Feel the heat of the pose start to energize out through your fingertips, maybe even through the crown of your head. And then as you exhale, let it come all back in towards midline. Inhale, expand. Energize all the way out to the outlines of your body. Exhale. Let everything concentrate back into the middle. Take one more deep breath here. And exhale. And if you're on your forearm, gently press back onto your right palm. Slowly release the right leg. Bring the left hand back around. Plant both hands to the inside of your left foot. 
Lift your right knee and get strong. Press through your hands so your spine lifts towards the ceiling and step the left foot back into plank position. Take an inhale, rock forward, exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Press the tops of your feet down, keep your hands under your shoulders. You're gonna move through these three cobras. Inhale, press up, feet heavy, heels drawing towards each other, hips heavy. And exhale, traction your spine as you lower down. Flip your hands out to the side. Still in line with your shoulders, tent your palms up. Inhale, lift up. Find a nice broad shoulder. Exhale, lower down. Traction in your spine as you set it down. Then moving into hands in front of your shoulders, elbow tips in towards your side. Just keep thinking of praying mantises for some reason when I do this pose. Inhale, lift up, draw your elbow tips towards each other, tenting your fingers, and then exhale, lower down. Palms back under your shoulders, tuck your toes, strong legs, inhale, press up. And then exhale, back, downward facing dog. Take three breaths, palms wide, fingers spread, Knees gently bent, inhale, and exhale. In and out through the nose, deep breath in. Pull your hips high. Exhale, feel your foundations. Feel what's touching the mat. Last time, inhale, and exhale. Lift the right leg high, inhale. Exhale, step the right foot forward just inside the right thumb. Lower your left knee down, press the top of the left foot down. Inhale, bring your hands up onto that right quad. Draw right back, left forward, hips are square. Sometimes it also helps to really feel with your hands on both hip crests what it's like to bring them in the same plane, a plane that's perpendicular to the ground. Draw your hands up, engage your core. And then exhale, plant both hands down to the inside of your right foot. Heel grounds down, pivot your toes out. Tuck your back toes under, look forward. Inhale, exhale all of the air out and step forward, right foot. Our left foot meets the right toes out, malasana. Hands together at heart center. Use that friction, elbows to the inside of your knee. Lengthen your chest, press your palms together. Inhale and exhale. One more time, inhale and exhale. Palms down, find a nice forward fold. Rotate on your heels so your toes are forward. Inhale, pull up, lift halfway. And then exhale, fold. Sweep your arms wide. Inhale, come all the way up to standing. And then exhale, bring your hands down to heart center. So we're going to move from what is a classical sun salutation into Surya Namaskar B. So also a flow um, this time with a warrior one in there. Most important to remember though, as we move through this, is that our hips are gonna stay straight to the front. And so all that work that we did, you know, pulling the front back, making sure that this is always parallel with the, or perpendicular to the mat, keep that in mind. And then again, remember that your hips are where they are and you can't force them to be anywhere else. So accept where you are on this journey. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Gaze down at your feet. You want them to be hip width distance apart. And then start to bend your knees, dropping your hips down and back into Utkatasana chair pose. Take an inhale. And exhale. Gaze forward, inhale. And exhale, fold. Inhale, pull your hands up your shins, Ardha Uttanasana. 
Exhale, plant your hands and step, step back into a plank position. Take a breath here in plank. And then exhale, lower down halfway. So you can bring your knees down if you'd like to, rock forward and don't let your shoulders drop below your elbows. Then kick your toes back, pull your chest through. Again, draw your heels together, upward facing dog. And then rolling over your toes, downward facing dog. Do the left side first. Inhale, lift your left leg high. Exhale, step your left foot by your left thumb. Tent your fingers, take a nice long lunge. And then exhale, drop your chin in towards your chest, look back towards your right foot. Step your right foot in one footprint and then ground the heel down towards midline. Again, pull your chest forward. Scissor your left hip back, right hip forward here. Then walk your hands up onto your left quad. Pull your left knee more forward so that it becomes more like a shelf and less like a ski jump. All right, so deeper lunge. Again, and even move your hands to your hips. Think about pulling the left hip back, right hip forward, and press down through the outside edge of your back right foot. Now, if this feels very uncomfortable on your knee, like you have some internal torque, you can always lift that back heel up into a high lunge. It's not cheating. All right. It's actually just a modification. So in some books that I've read, they call war or high lunge a warrior one modification. So take whichever feels best for you. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, draw your left knee more forward. Notice if you start moving towards the inside edge of that back right foot, if you have it planted, and see if you can equalize the weight in that back foot. Draw your navel in, take another deep breath in. And then exhale, plant both hands down. Lift the right heel, press through both hands, step the left foot back, take a deep breath in. Rock forward, exhale, lower down halfway. Kick your toes back, inhale, pull your chest through. Upward facing dog, keeping the heels again drawing together, hips elevated, and then exhale, curling over your toes, downward facing dog. Bend your knees, inhale, lift your right leg high. Exhale, step your right foot forward by your right thumb. Tent your fingers, draw your chest through. So you're setting knee over ankle. Exhale, drop your chin towards your chest. Gaze down on your left leg. Step it forward one foot plank, and then heel down into the midline. Right here with your hands planted. Again, pull your right hip back, left hip forward. Trying to keep that foot down or moving into that warrior one variation with the heel lifted. Then walk your hands onto that thigh. So this helps to keep your lunge low. Keep this hamstring running parallel to the ground. Again, make that friction, integration, pulling in, and then sweep your arms up. Warrior one, take a deep breath in and out. Draw your right knee back forward over your right ankle. Open your chest, take a deep inhale. Exhale, place both hands down, lift your left heel, step back, plank. Inhale, exhale, lower down halfway. Kick your toes back, inhale, pull your chest through. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, all the air out. Slowly make your journey, no air on your lungs, feet walking forward so that they come in line with your hands. Inhale, press up halfway. Exhale, fold. Drop your hands down so you have feet width distance between your, or feet width distance, hip width distance between your feet. So that's two fists between your big toe mounds, bend your knees. Inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. All right, in your chair pose. 
Now, we worked with this a little bit last week. We're going to take it somewhere a little bit different tonight. But you see on the screen that hip width distance, first off, does not mean that the width of my hips are between my feet. Like Malasana, you can squat down. Utkatasana, it's like parallel rods. So that can be a little bit easier for people um, to sit back and down and not tweak the SI joint. All right, move the weight into your right foot, lift your left leg up, try and keep your hips square, and then bring the outside of that ankle just above the knee, figure four, bring your hands down into heart center. Deep breath in and out. Move your hands to your hips, notice, if the one with the lifted leg is higher, and if it is, draw it back down. Find a little balance, take an inhale. And exhale, again, sit down and back. Navel draws back in towards your chest. Sweep your arms forward, inhale, come up. Standing, plant that foot down. Hands to hips, and do some little rotations in the hips, like hula hoop. And then straighten it back out, feet hip width distance apart. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, sit down and back, Utkatasana, chair pose. You wanna make sure that you're not finding a deep posterior tilt in the pelvis. It usually means you're not using any of your core. So I'm gonna draw that back in slightly. Sometimes I'll even put my, the back of my hands, my low back to make sure it's a little bit more straight. All right, then weight going into the left foot. Lift the right leg up, inhale, flex that foot. Bring the outside of the ankle on top of the knee. Sit down and back, hands together at heart center. Inhale, and exhale, draw your hands to your hips. Again, find a nice square hip. So the standing leg, usually gonna have to drop back a little bit, and then the lifted leg is gonna have to drop down a little bit. You can pretend your hands are like vices, pushing everything in towards midline. All right, slowly press the standing, let that foot slip down. Inhale, reach your arms up. And then exhale, hands together to heart center. All right, let's add that into our flow. Inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, fold. Inhale, take a halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step, step back into plank. Draw your chest forward, inhale. Exhale, lower down halfway. Take your toes back, inhale, pull your chest through, upward facing dog. Heels draw towards each other. Roll over your toes, exhale, down dog. Gentle bend in the knees, inhale, sweep your left leg high. Exhale, step your left foot forward by your left thumb. Pinch your fingers, draw your chest forward. Gaze down, chin in towards your chest. Step your right foot in and then heel grounds down. Inhale, sweep up. Here, Vajrasana two. Exhale, find that scissoring in your hips. Left hip back, right hip forward. Find that friction. Again, like you're cutting a piece of paper. Move your hands down to your hips. Make sure that they're nice and square. Again, you can take that variation, especially if you feel like your hips are opening out to the right side. And move your gaze back forward. Lift the back heel, bring more of the weight into the left leg. Start to press into that left leg, sweep the right leg up and forward. Figure four, draw your hands down to heart center. Make that a smooth transition. If you want to, you can step back. Warrior one, exhale, figure four. Maybe do that one more time. Inhale, warrior one, exhale, figure four. Flex your right foot. Bring your left hand to the bottom of your right foot. Right hand to the inside of your left knee. And take it as deep, applying as much pressure as feels good. 
really open up your hips in this figure four. Deep breath in. Maybe let your eyes go a little bit more closed. Your, let your lids drop a little bit. Find the balance, the stability, the strength in your left leg. And slowly come to standing. Let the right foot drop down. Inhale, reach your arms up. And then exhale, sit down and back, Utkatasana, chair pose. Feet still hip width distance apart, knees drawing slightly back, hips back to the weight is in your heels, lift your gaze up, inhale, and then exhale, fold. Inhale, pull your hands up your shins, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold, step, step back, plank. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, lower down halfway. Kick your toes back, pull your chest through. Upward facing dog, Urva Mukha Svanasana. And then exhale, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Take a breath in and out. Inhale, sweep your right leg high. Exhale, step your right foot forward all the way up by your right hand. Take a long lunge, tend your fingertips, inhale. Exhale, drop your chin. Gaze back, step the left foot in, heel grounds down. Inhale, sweep up. Rear Vajrasana, one, warrior one. Find that squaring of the hip. Reach. Draw your navel in, gazes forward. Take a deep breath in and out. Move more of the weight forward to draw that knee back forward. Lift the back heel, inhale, exhale. Step forward, figure four. So we're gonna do that three more times because the transition is I think where you find the strength, right? It's that big movement forward. So slowly step back, inhale, rear one, exhale, forward. It's a little bit wobbly maybe. See if you can find some stability. Keep your gaze at one spot as you transition. Inhale back, warrior one. Exhale, move the weight forward, step forward. Figure four, hands down to heart center. Flex your left toes back. Oh my gosh, it's nine o'clock. For you, maybe seven, maybe a different time. Bring your hands to the bottom of your foot to the inside of your knee. Take a deep breath in and out. One more time, inhale and exhale. And slowly let your right leg come to straight, slip the left leg down, inhale, sweep your arms up. And then exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, take a halfway lift. Pivot toes out, exhale, come down, Malasana. Elbows to the inside of your knees, inhale, reach your chest up and forward. And then exhale, let your chin drop into your chest. Start to release the friction between elbows and knees and walk your hands forward, crawl into a tight ball. And slowly, and you can either keep hands forward, stretching into your upper back, or you can move hands behind you, especially if you're not working with a forgiving surface and lower your hips down to the mat, using your hands behind your quads, bring your knees in. Take one more child's pose, reaching up for the outside of your feet, grounding your pelvis down. Inhale and exhale. 
One more time, inhale. And exhale, let your feet release. Slowly extend them long. Move your hands down by your side. And take five breaths. Letting this signify a point. Maybe as a point of beginning. Maybe it is beginning of a shift or a transition. Or maybe it signifies an end. But it is a point in time. It is a bindu, the very middle of a mandala, where there is so much wrapped around this one point in space. A recognition of where you are right now and that right here is exactly where you should be slowly draw your knees back up towards the ceiling plant your feet down on the mat wrap your knees over to one side and press up to a comfortable seat Bring your hands together at heart center. Inhale and exhale. And drawing your thumbs up to third eye center. Be curious. Follow your bliss. Namaste.